Hey friends, before we start today's episode, I have an important message to share with you. As you must be aware, due to certain new policies, you are not able to comment on our videos. But don't you worry, my friends, you can still share your valuable feedback, comments, views, and love at our email ID peekabookidsfeedback at gmail.com. Similarly, you can also visit our Instagram and Facebook page and continue to engage with us. We are looking forward to hearing from you. Hmm, here it is. The history of zoonotic disease. Zoonotic disease? <laughs> oh no, little kitty. It isn't zootonic. It's zoonotic disease. Hey friend, I'm sure just like little kitty, you too must be feeling confused about this fancy Nancy word. So, in today's episode, let us look at this topic, which is a need of the hour and explore the sick world of zoonotic diseases. Zoom in! A long time ago, in October of 1346, few ships arrived at the Sicilian port, and when the locals rushed in to welcome the coming guests, they were shocked by the horrific sight, as almost all the travelers were either dead or were about to and their bodies were engulfed in boils full of pus and blood. This was the arrival of Black Death in Europe that was said to be spread by flea residing in the bodies of rodents, squirrels and rabbits. Although there is no strong evidence found to prove that theory, but if it's true, then it was one of the most lethal zoonotic diseases humanity ever suffered from. But the question is, what is zoonotic diseases? Well, zoonosis or zoonotic disease is the one that can be transmitted from animals to people or more specifically a disease that generally exists in animals but that can infect humans. More often than not, the animals do not spread their sickness to humans. But when they do, they have the potential to cause a fatal pandemic around the globe, like the swine flu, bird flu, the black death, and the most recent one, COVID-19, that is assumed to be coming from a bat. But the crucial question is, how can the viruses, bacteria, and other pathogens infect from animals to humans and what makes it so harmful? Well, viruses are found nearly in all living beings. In order to survive and thrive in this world, they must go through three stages. The first is to find a new host. The second is to multiply its species in it. And the third is to transmit itself into a new individual. For example, let's look at human influenza. As soon as the virus finds its new host, they quickly enter its respiratory tract, where most of the time your immune system will kick him out. So in order to survive in the new body, the virus needs to change his game plan and mount a successful infection as quickly as possible. And in order to accomplish this task, the cunning viruses have developed a specific interaction with their host species. Yes, these flu viruses come up loaded with particular proteins to connect with matching receptors on human respiratory cells. And once they enter inside the cell, the virus hijacks the host cell's reproductive machinery and replicate its own genetic material. Now, the virus only needs to save itself from the host's immune response to multiply and infect more cells. And after that, 
All it will take is one sneeze to spread the virus from one host to another, including other humans and animals. But most of the time, this plan doesn't work and viruses fail to take over the world. So, every 20 to 40 years or so, the influenza virus changes its plan and it changes its genes with some wild flu virus present in pigs or other poultry animals in the process called antigenic shift. This brings a dramatic mutation in the virus, making them stronger with unpredictable behavior that makes it hard for the animal's immune system to detect and fight these new species of viruses as they begin to take over its body, causing symptoms like fever, inflamed eyes and running snouts. And once a human comes in contact with these poor infected animals, the virus quickly takes this opportunity and jumps into a new host, making them sick. But fortunately, these widespread flus happen very rarely as in most cases, the genetic differences between the two hosts is too much and only occurs when the new species is closely related to the virus's usual host. Meaning, it will be easier for a virus present in chimpanzee, that is the human's close relative, to harm people as compared to a virus from cats, dogs or pigs. However, once the virus evolves and becomes more dangerous, it has the potential to cause a worldwide pandemic. And as the viruses are smarter than we think, predicting the next major disease is a massive challenge for us. Trivia time! Did you know over 200 diseases have been identified as zoonotic disease so far? Yes, up to 70% of all infectious diseases originate from wildlife. But remember my friends, these innocent animals have no choice but to deal with these diseases. It's up to humans to take care of them, help them and leave them alone in the forest. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Until next time, it's me. Dr. Binox zooming out. Ah, <coughs> oh, never mind.